All right, so I'm here with Rantomania episode five, I believe it is. So I got five things to rant about. I'm actually thinking about making another one right after this one because there's just so much fucking shit on the fucking show. So I, I'm probably going to make another one right after this. So, you know, I might wait like a day or two to upload it or, or you know, because I don't want to upload like two right away. Give you some time to watch the first one that I upload, then maybe upload the one, I don't know, on a couple of days after. Maybe I'll upload them on the same day. You know, I don't fucking know. Whatever I feel like doing. So, yeah, I got five topics. Might add some more. Um, probably will do another one. So, first one. Uh, Brian, Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan had a match on Raw. Everybody is saying this match was awesome. Going on Bleacher Report, so they gave it an A+. Plus. What? An A fucking plus? So they're saying this was a five star match. No, 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 no. This match, it was very, I thought it was below average. I mean, you had one good spot. One good spot. It wasn't even that great a spot either because Rowan botched it a little bit. Brian came flying over the ropes. Um, he was caught by uh, um, Rowan. He, uh, then Rowan almost fucking fell into the stands catching him. And then Rowan threw him into the barricade. It was a good spot. It was good. Was it great? I wouldn't say it was a great spot. But that was it. That was pretty much it. Brian hit his couple moves, <laughs> five moves of doom if you want to say that, I mean, but they are way better than the five moves of doom, that's for sure, but Brian hit his normal moves, which are really good moves, basically what we've been seeing for the past three, four months, this match basically uh, um, had a, just a bunch of kicks, a bunch of uh, punches, elbows, just basic wrestling really. I mean, there was nothing that really caught my mind, which I'm like, holy shit, wow. You know, nothing that, you know, like when Brian was wrestling, like, Seth Rollins, they were doing some very cool shit. Like, I remember one of the probably best spots I've seen out of the whole year. Brian was doing a, um, suplex, um, no, German suplex to Rollins. And Rollins did a fucking flip and landed on his feet. Holy shit, was that cool. Now that's a great spot there. Or when Daniel Bryan and Rollins had some of the best matches on Raw. Or when uh, Rollins was on the top rope and Daniel Bryan flipped him in a German suplex and he did a, a backflip or whatever, landed on his like belly and face. So, I mean, that's a really cool spot there. Uh, but... I mean, this spot, I mean, it was almost botched, pretty much. And people are saying, you know, it was a good spot. But it wasn't, like, awesome or anything. It wasn't awe-inspiring. So, and then, basically, after that, just a bunch of kicks, uh, clotheslines, just boring, basic wrestling. It's about as basic as you get with that match. Picked up a little bit at the end, but it was nowhere near enough to be a great match. Especially a fucking five-star match. I don't know what people are seeing out of these Wyatt Brian or Wyatt and Punk and Brian matches. They were saying the one at Survivor Series was great. Just again, just because it had one good spot, a power bomb off the top rope, and then they start start chanting "This is awesome." You know, this year I've been hearing a ton of "This is awesome" chants, which is ironic because a company is the, the the worst it's been in fucking forever. I don't know why they just like just recently like you hear "This is awesome" chants like every fucking week now. This is awesome should be chanting, chanted like in the great moments. Only the select few moments. Like when CM Punk was facing Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar gave, gave, F, gave the F5 to CM Punk for the first time. Or at WrestleMania when CM Punk was facing Undertaker. Like, or when Brian won the belt. That, that's when you should be chanting, this is awesome. Not when one good spot during a boring 15 minute match at Survivor Series. You know, that chain is so fucking overused. And this match was far from awesome. It's, it pretty much sucked. Uh, not, number two. Uh, I actually heard this. I was listening to a podcast. Listen to this podcast. The Solid Monster Sounds Off podcast. It's on iTunes or some pod. You know, I downloaded the podcast app. It's a really good podcast to listen to. 
it's pretty long. I don't, I'm not a big fan of like long podcasts or anything, like long things to listen to. But podcast is really cool because you could listen to it for a little bit. You could even like close it and close the app and it will still play um, the, the podcast. But you could go on another app, play a game or some shit like that. It's a really good little uh, show. He reviews uh, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, a pay-per-view if it's on. So it's a very good podcast. Very entertaining to listen to. It's a bit long, but over the whole week, I have plenty of time to listen to it. Like when Bruce Blitz uh, on here, he does like a... I was listening to some of his... I didn't even watch it, but I listened to like a little bit, like the first 15 seconds of his Raw review. It's like two and a half hours long. Can't I can't listen to a two and a half hour raw review. So anyway, fans, yeah, that solemn monster guy. He was he went to Raw and he was saying how a guy wearing a Macho Man Randy Savage costume and a Hulk Hogan costume got kicked out of Raw. Really? Just fucking stupid. Seriously, you're gonna kick somebody out for wearing fucking costumes of your own fucking employees. Former employees, not current, but so you know you're paying tribute to some of the great, great, uh, greatest people of twenty or thirty years ago. Um, would they be good now? Probably not. But back then they were stars. And Hulk Hogan, most famous wrestler of all time, can't debate that. If you ask somebody, uh, name a wrestler who's not a wrestling fan, they're probably gonna say Hulk Hogan. Maybe John Cena, but they're probably gonna say Hulk Hogan. Um, yeah, the most popular wrestler of all time. Doesn't mean he's the greatest wrestler, but he's the most popular. And then Randy Savage, another uh, pe person that a lot of people really liked. So, yeah, I mean, just paying tribute, having fun. Isn't that what fucking is? Entertainment. Uh, you know, is WWE jealous that these people are more entertained than their fucking show, so they have to kick him out? <laughs> just fucking stupid. Alright, I think... That's pretty self-explanatory that I don't have to go on for 20 minutes and talk about this. Next one. Raw. Contained. It seems like every match was contained jobbers. Or like a fucking squash match. And you know, I was listening to the Brad Rules video. And he's like, everybody's a jobber except four or five people. And it's fucking true. <laughs> and when John Cena wins, he's going to make everybody except himself a jobber when he beats Orton. Cena's just burying everybody. He is. And I, it's just fucking retarded. They're, they're building him up. He, he started as World Heavyweight Champion. Now he's going to be the Undisputed Champion or, or the Unified Champion. I got That's one of my topics. I got to rant on that. Yeah, but Cena. Just going to bury everybody. Del Rio. He's going to he bury her. He buried CM Punk, basically. Bury Daniel Bryan. Then bury Daniel Bryan. Or bury Daniel Bryan. Triple H did. But he pretty much buried every single person on the fucking roster. Um, let's go back, actually, to the Royal Rumble. Uh, just came in at number, like, 20 fucking 3 or something. Threw everybody over the ropes, beat them like nothing. Elimination Chamber. He does, he does job out to the Shield, so at least he didn't bury the Shield. WrestleMania beats The Rock, which I was glad about, actually, because The Rock fucking sucks. Uh, Extreme Rules beats Ryback, Payback, Ryback. It's all, you know, it's a fucking terrible feud pretty much there. Besides their match at Extreme Rules. Then we go to uh, Money in the Bank. Uh, faced Henry, buried Henry. Um, then we go to SummerSlam. Lost to Brian, which is, you know, it's good. Then he, you know, so actually from SummerSlam before, uh, he wasn't really burying anybody, which I had a problem with. Then he comes back, like the Superman, like a fucking, uh, you know, unstoppable person. And he just buries everybody. Like, he isn't, I don't think he's lost yet. He buries Del Rio. Buries, and I'm not a big fan of Del Rio, but he buried Del Rio. Buried the real Americans. Buried Sandow. Burying fucking everybody in the fucking ground where they can't even fucking see the light. Putting the dirt back on them. Can't even get back out of the hole. So it's just bullshit with and he's going to be the only legit guy on the roster. And everybody else is going to be jobbers. I mean, jobbers are all over the place now in WWE. 
everybody's a jobber now, except Cena. So, yeah, it's like, I'm watching Raw, and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of jobbers on the show. You know, and I'm actually, like, in reality, the whole fucking roster is pretty much a jobber. Pretty much jobbers. So, yeah. Then you get, uh, you know, Los, number four, is Los Matadores. <laughs> These guys debuted, like, I don't know, a month ago, maybe six weeks. And ever since, you know, they were... They were facing like three on B every fucking week. Yeah, give us some variety on the show. But no, we get three on B versus Matador. It's like every fucking week on SmackDown on Raw. They face like 10,000 fucking times. And Matador has only been on the company for like six weeks. So they faced them probably more uh, times than, than weeks they've been on the company. So, um, yeah, it's like, and they, now they're off for Raw. They're not even on fucking Raw, which is like, I'm not disappointed about that because they're fucking annoying. But, you know, when you create a new talent, uh, looking from WWE standpoint, uh, they, they're on Raw for like two or three weeks, and then they just disappear. It's like you invest all this time to making a new character, a new gimmick, you give them promos before Raw. You know, I remember they were hyping their uh, debut. You give them, you put all this time and, and work into the fucking character and gimmick idea, although it fucking sucked. And then you just fucking take him off a of raw. So it's like, yeah, great job, WWE. Next one. Next one, and this is the last one. The name of the belt. Voted by the WWE Universe. I don't think they rigged this vote, by the way. I think this was legit. Um, everybody voted for the unified belt. Now, they could have just named it the uni. You know, people could have voted for the undisputed title. Because that's what it was called in the Attitude Era. So, you know, maybe some remembrance of the Attitude Era. Except there's only one one problem. The holder of the belt's John Cena. So, yeah, big difference. You know, you got Steve Austin, The Rock, two of the most charismatic people ever in the history of wrestling. Then you got John Cena, who's one of the most uncharismatic, most hated guys in wrestling. I mean, he's a fucking protagonist of WWE. The fucking top babyface. And he gets booed. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, the unified belt. Like, maybe it's good to name that, like, for the short term. But think about, like, a year from now. I said this in my Raw review. I already br brought it up. But, like, for the unified title, it's going to be uh, whoever versus whoever. It's like, it doesn't really make sense in, like, five, ten years. It's not a good long-term name. Uh, I think that's pretty logical, too. I don't, you know, maybe it's just a little thing. It, it is a little thing, but I don't like to rant about the obvious things in this fucking show, or video, not really a fucking show, but video. Like, I could easily put Titus O'Neil puking, but that's pretty self-explanatory why that sucked. Um, yeah, it's like unified belt. Good for the short term, but even in, like, a couple months. At WrestleMania, it's John Cena. Versus CM Punk for the Unified Championship. You don't even know what it means. Like, they could have just named it the Undisputed title. Or the WWE. They could have just named it the WWE title and kept it like that. I mean, that just would have been the best thing, I think. But no, it's like... Hopefully they don't take into consideration the fans. But they should, I mean... They should take into... They should name the Unified Bell if that's what they... If they didn't rig, rig it. I don't know if they rigged it. You can't have any trust in Vince McMahon. He doesn't trust his fans... We don't trust him. So that's a great relationship the fans have with Vince McMahon. So hopefully, you know, I'd, it would just make logic to name it the Unified Belt since that's what most people wanted. So I wouldn't have a problem if they did that. Because you should listen to your fans, all right? Since 38% of the people, the majority of the people wanted the Unified Belt, name it the Unified Belt. I just blame the people who fucking voted for this because think ahead not going to be that great of a name in a couple months or a couple years, especially a couple of years when you forget about this whole feud. It's not going to be a memorable feud, so you're not going to remember about it. So you're going to be calling it the Unified Belt in like five years and nobody's going to remember this feud because it's going to fucking suck. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Rank the Mania Episode 5. There you fucking go, people.